So what's it like living in a small country town? Well here we are in Kalgoa, pretty small Mallee town. We'll have a work, walk down the main street and you'll get a feel for it. The first thing you realise is just how quiet the place is. No sounds, not much movement, nobody hustling and bustling. She's a pretty quiet existence. The focal point of all these towns, or most of them, is they all still have an active pub, which is uh, not just a place to drink, but it's an essential meeting place for small communities. Everybody comes together at the pub, whether it be after sporting events or whatever. But the other side of it is they're not as busy as they used to be. And you'll end up with buildings like this one we're just looking at now. It's on the market, it's vacant, would have been a business at some time. The need doesn't exist anymore. And so it'll sit on the market until somebody sees some potential in it. The local pub here is running free camping, which is a good idea because they're, they're just off the main road to Muldura. Um, it's a great way to bring people into a small little town and it's a great way to bring people into your pub. This building on the corner is typical of Australian uh, architecture, if you like. All our little country towns used to have verandas like this out the front. Those colours were very popular. The green and gold were period sort of colours. And another essential for all these little towns is that they have a public hall. People hire these for events, 21sts or community events get run in places like this. Often you'll find rural councils will travel round and they'll make a point of meeting in some of the smaller towns and when they do they generally use the um, the town hall for that purpose. So 1938 the Colgoa Public Hall was built almost looks like it's two stories there must be something up there in the day they would have run dances they would have it would have been a cinema um, very much a social hub not so much today but they are still very very valued by the local communities again if you look around People that live in these areas live here because they enjoy the solitude, they enjoy the peace and quiet. But more, mostly, they like being part of a small community, somewhere where they know everyone, where everybody knows them. So even though they're isolated, they're not alone. And here's an activity going on here that is typical of an Australian country town on any Sunday. The lawn bowls. They travel hundreds of kilometres to play bowls every Sunday. It's a huge social event. And a feature uh, mainly for the older people in the community, but becoming more and more popular with younger people. They're certainly making attempts to attract younger people. They run barefoot bowls nights, which are very casual basically an opportunity to walk on the greens, play the game and enjoy a few beers with your mates and um, they're very popular events. <laughs> Just having a look at this little house now, the, the pride and effort that they put into the garden here is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Obviously their little Shangri-La, their slice of heaven. Another typical Australian style house with the verandas running around it. And this garden's very much tapered for the dry environment that's in it. All these towns had churches and the likes. Every church was everywhere. Generally, 
the Catholic Church will be on the highest bit of ground in town and then the others follow. But if the Catholic Church couldn't get the highest bit of ground, you can bet they put the highest steeple up. Seemed to be a thing for the Catholics. A little town park here, good facilities for kids, for the mums and that. Good for visiting people. Again, a couple, couple more examples of some early, early turn of the century sort of Australian architecture. Very typical. Transportable materials, so they tended to be weatherboard. Wide verandas because it was a hot climate. The slash windows that open top and bottom to allow hot and cold air to flow through. This one needs a bit of work, but they're all salvageable. And of course we've got Annie Koobs' police station. One, one woman police station here in Kalgoa. She's doing a great job, Annie. So next door, another example of an early Australian architecture. Very simple, quite a small building this one. Somebody's added a carport on at some stage. Looks like the trusses were made in the local engineering shop. Bought on site. This almost looks like it was a transportable building. And that was quite common, again, because they're isolated and particularly in these Mallee towns, didn't have access to a great amount of timber. So everything had to come on trucks or be rail freighted in. It's got a bay window, which is quite, quite a feature for a little house. So yeah, certainly in its day was somebody's pride and joy. Here we go, the Uniting Church. A bit smaller. Uh, not it, it appears to be active, it's still got the sign on top. But a lot of these buildings get bought by, go on the market and get bought by people who convert them into a home. And they do make nice homes. And this looks like some sort of community garden or similar. I'd almost bet it is. Perhaps it's a men's shed, there we go. Kalgoa, scarecrows, etc. Probably a men's shed or something similar, a place for the locals to gather, to work together. Men's sheds are big in country towns, an opportunity for people who have worked with machinery all their life to come together and um, use their skills, share their skills to do things for their community. It's a great social event. So, so that's a quick lap of Kalgoa. Small Australian rural country town. Fairly typical of a Mallee town.